with the fermentation. Some people say it's no problem at all. So um, at your discretion. And so I'll, I'll take a, a gallon of water and I will boil it for four minutes, let it cool for about a half hour, and then I'll add salt. And my measurements are one and a half tablespoons of salt per quart. So if I'm doing a gallon, I'm doing six tablespoons of salt. And I just put the salt in there and then stir it up and then I'll just leave it, let it come to room temperature. So it can take four hours. Sometimes if I'm gonna pickle in the morning, I'll boil it at night, put the salt in a half hour later, just put the cover on, go to sleep, wake up, have perfectly room temperature brine the next morning and I can go and I can start working. Um, so some, brine is just salt water then? Okay. Yeah. Some cultures will actually be using boiling water these are, I read this, I've done a lot of research, and so the Polish people would have these big vats, and they'd throw the cabbage in and tape off their shoes and socks, and they'd stomp on it, and then they'd pour boiling water in it. I'm not, I'm not doing the boiling water technique. I know their technique works. I'm doing a slightly different technique, but I just want to let you know there are different techniques from all over the world, and they all work. Some people never heat the water, but they use pounds of salt, okay, because they have to, because there may be weird bacteria in there. So... So that's the thing. Are there probiotics on the feet? <laughs> <laughs> They've been walking Maybe your field. feet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's our brine. Um, you can just use plain vegetables as an empty jar. You can put herbs and spices on the bottoms of the jars, sometimes on the top. You can use, this is um, black pepper, black mustard seed, bay leaf. I have a little bit of hot pepper I'm going to put in. When I'm doing cucumber pickles, I'll get dill and crush a bunch of dill, you know, just like stuff a bunch in there and just like crush it down. Um, these are horseradish leaves that I'm going to be using for something else. Um, sometimes, can you cut that for me? Thank you. Horseradish is really prized in Chinese fermentations. It helps to keep things crispy. Uh, give me a hunk. Just, uh -huh. yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah. Okay, so then if you have a horseradish patch in your garden, if you have one, you can use some of these stems and just put it on the bottom and it will just flavor it a little bit. So you can do all sorts of different kinds of spices, whatever you want. Garlic? Yes. I recommend that you, you know, when you start, do something that's just plain, so you can get the taste of what just the vegetables and the salt brine taste like. Then you start adding gradually, and then you can sort of taste and get a sense of what you really like. Because each thing you add really does affect the taste. It's part. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, no, because so I wouldn't put those in because somebody might try and bite them, and they'll be too hot. Um. Hard. Okay. Uh, but thank you anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things we need to know. Okay, and so let's start with, um, here we go. So I have all these tools, crab mallets and food pushers, um, rocks, okay? <laughs> um, so in the, in the old days when people made um, sauerkraut in big crocks, and you might remember, maybe your grandparents did this. They would, um, they'd have the crock, and they'd have a plate or a piece of wood that was cut the size that they'd wrap in a cloth, and they'd stick it like right on top, and it would like fit right in. And they'd take something heavy, like a weight or a heavy pot or a thing of water, to just sit. Because besides, uh, you know, you want to keep all the vegetables under the brine. It needs a little bit of pressure to make the fermentation happen. And so I've improvised. With this, is, the rocks are my weight. This is what I've done. These are garden rocks from my garden, and Sue's garden. <laughs> and I'll show you how I put it together. So I use rocks in these jars. Some other people are using plastic bags with water, which I don't really want to put a plastic bag in my fermentation personally. Sometimes they use those like a little pint, a half pint canning jar that will fit right in there. So they'll just fill that with water and let it sit. All different things that people do. This has been working for me really well. So I'm going to start to put together. Oopsie. What? <clears throat> they probably don't know that they're sterilized rocks. Oh, and the rocks have been scrubbed with a brush, gone through the dishwasher, and boiled sterilized. So they're really, 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 really clean. And if you decide to, you know, try the rock method, you know, if you're picking rocks. Just really rub them with your fingers, and if anything, any sand or grit 
No. Any flaking, you don't want it. You want a rock that is just permanently rock. Go ahead. What, what about that metal thing? What do you call that that's on the top of the jar? The funnel? Yeah. Oh, it's just a funnel? Yeah, it's just a funnel. Yeah, these are just um, wide mouth funnels. And I've, you know, if I had my druthers, somebody would make me a funnel that was this big because, you know, I'd rather just, you know, throw it in this mouth. Okay, good. Okay, so you have your chopped vegetables, you have your chopped cabbage, and actually it's a little bit too much. Okay. And so the way you want to start is with about two inches, and then then you, you want to press it in. Um, can we, let's move the compost. Where did you get the wooden press thing? This thing? This came with a tool called a sheen waz, which is sort of like a a thing to strain and move. Oh, it looks yeah, like a ricer. Uh, yeah, I don't I've seen those. Before. That's right. Yeah. So, so this is good. These are crab mallets, which is, are really excellent. I'm going to show you both of them. This is a food pusher for a food grinder. So sometimes you may already have something in your house that will work. And so then what you want to do is just kind of smash it down a little bit. And you do it in like two inch increments. Uh, no. And what does the smashing do? It takes the air out oh. and it bruises the vegetables a little bit and it um, gets some of the juices kind of flowing. Mm -hmm. and, and so some people say that you have to pound your cabbage or else you're not going to get a good fermentation. And then there are these special like, go ahead, cabbage pounders, these wonderful things. They just, I don't know, they have like mallets and like stompers like this. And I, I, the first time I tried the pounding technique, I did it with red cabbage. And my white kitchen was completely speckled in red. And they're saying that you know, if you pound the heck out of it, you're going to get the juices flowing. There was no juice. I'm sorry. There was like no juice. So I've, I'm doing a different method. Is this in your way? Can you see? Can you also uh, use your hands massaging the way? I had salt that I was massaging into it, and a lot of water, a lot of juice was coming out. Is yep. that another, instead it's of another way you can yep. massage? Definitely. Okay. Definitely can. Yeah. So, yeah, so some people say you have to pound it in order to bruise it to get the stuff moving. But then I read somewhere else that the, um, the pounding is to get the air out, because you want an anaerobic medium where only lactobacillus will grow. You don't want any other stuff to grow. So if you squash it down, then you're basically getting the air out. And I think that's the equivalent of stomping on it with your bare feet. Okay, then you get to a certain, you get to like the shoulder of the jar. And I like to use these wide mouth jars because there's a little bit of a film that ends up sticking to the inside of the jar when, by the time you empty it. And I like to get in there and scrub it so these wide mouths I can get my hand in. And so I like the jars to be really clean. So that I, I don't even use like the narrow jars anymore. Okay, let's go. So you have your pounded, you want to just it? Yeah, so you have your pounded vegetables and you bring it up to about the shoulder. So the intention is to keep the vegetables under the brine. So if you have water and you have little pieces, they're all going to float up. So we need to make a barrier. And that's what I call the leaf layer. Oh, I was going to put the onion in there. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, well, yes. Yes. Okay. There's a little bit of onions in this. And so, one of the ways you make a, a barrier is from a cabbage leaf. So, when you're working with your cabbage, you peel out the, the outer layers, wash them, and then this rib is a little stiff, so I usually take that out and just kind of press it in, trying to just, that's a very stiff leaf. Um, it's too stiff, so that's not a good one, so, but that's, you get the idea, mm -hmm. okay? And I brought these um, horseradish leaves to demonstrate how you, it doesn't have to be cabbage. It can be horseradish, it can be bok choy, it can be um, Swiss chard, it can be raspberry leaves, it can be grape leaves. Kale? Yes. Kale. I read that some Polish women use oak leaves. Just kind of surprised me. 